Across the Ukrainian capital of Kiev, some people expressed hope and pragmatism following news that Donald Trump was set to become US president again. This is not very good for Ukraine, because his position was quite uncertain at times, he wavered between supporting and not supporting. He is an eccentric person, so it is not very clear how he will influence us and the support of Ukraine in the US, he said. 18-year-old law student Victoria Zubritska was pragmatic about her expectations for the next American president, following what she called was the false hope that the Biden administration offered. I think Trump is operating with more objective facts on what will happen to our country. He doesn't feed us with hope, as it was done during Biden's presidency, said Zubritska. Oleksandr Kryev, 27, director of the North America program of the Ukrainian PRISM, an independent analytical center of foreign policy and international security, sees Trump as a political leader who will raise the risks for Ukraine but will also provide new opportunities for the resolution of the ongoing war. Trump is risky, but that does not mean something negative. It just means that he is difficult to predict, Kryev told. Trump has said repeatedly he would have a peace deal done between Ukraine and Russia within a day if he is elected, although he has not said how. During his debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, he twice refused to directly answer a question about whether he wanted U.S. ally Ukraine to win, raising concerns that Ukraine would be forced to accept unfavorable terms in any negotiations he oversaw. Як на мене, це не дуже гарно для України, бо в нього була невизначена позиція, він то підтримує, то не підтримує, і ну, дуже він ексцентрична така людина, тому не дуже зрозуміло, як це вплине на нас і на підтримку України з боку США. Наразі складно об'єктивно оцінити його кампанію, тому що враховуючи його різні думки для кожного штату і певну невизначеність, воно дає певне різноголосся та якраз таки невідучність для нас. Але якщо аналізувати його кампанію та Камали Херіс, мені здається, він нам дає більш об'єктивні факти про те, що буде наряд з нашою державою, не підкормлює нас певними надіями, як це відбувалося за каденції президента Байдена. І я думаю, це буде нам на краще набагато. Тому ми будемо жити в певному світі фактів, де ми будемо точно знати, що з нами буде, бо визначеність і об'єктивна правда набагато краще, ніж брехня та життя в ілюзіях. Трамп ризиковий, але це не означає негатив. Це просто означає, що його важко передбачити. І він – це, в першу чергу, більше роботи, більше переконування, більше доведення нашої позиції, донесення, чому важливо робити те і не потрібно робити інше. Себто для України, в першу чергу, це підвищення ризиків. Ризиків закінчення допомоги, ризиків вимушених перемовин з Росією, бо хоча українське керівництво говорить про перемовини вже достатньо давно, проте вони можуть бути абсолютно різними. І були такі позичали думки про те, що можливо навіть странно. Це ризик, але такий ризик, з яким можна працювати і який можна навпаки обернути в можливість. Закривання Гуантану. Це було два тижні до 20 січня, по суті, тобто початок січня року, коли він перестав бути президентом. В 16-му році всі казали, він же про стіну жартує, це образ, стіна. Ні, будував. Ще, до речі, це не кричав на кожному куті. Він просто будував стін. Трамп за перший термін вистав 300 тисяч мігрантів, Обама за 2 півтора мільйони. In the Kursk region, Ukrainian troops are maneuvering tactics in conducting combat operations, 
Where the enemy tries to advance believing that he already has an advantage, we maneuver, conduct a counter-attack, win back a number of positions and create a barrage of grey zones so the enemy cannot enter this or that territory. The former head of the Foreign Intelligence Service of Ukraine, General of the Army, Mikhailo Malomuz, spoke about this on the YouTube channel Govorit Veliki Lviv. During combat missions, the Ukrainian armed forces actively use UAVs, HIMARS, M270, eliminating personnel of the Russian army, and also use water obstacles, primarily the Seam River. Accordingly, powerful logistics routes and fortified areas are formed. It won't be easy for the enemy, the analyst predicted. Let me remind you that Putin ordered our troops to be pushed back from Kursk region by October the 1st. But you see, in this situation, none of Putin's instructions worked. So North Korean troops are being sent to Kursk region first and foremost to strengthen the Russian group and not to remove additional forces from Pokrovsko, Kurakovsko and other directions where they will continue to advance. Malomuz also emphasized that Ukraine should practice operations similar to Kursk in other regions of the Russian Federation, in particular in the Bryansk and Belgorod regions. The most important thing is to maintain the element of surprise. But unfortunately, we do not have enough forces and resources to implement such plans. Ukrainian intelligence has reported that there are now 11,000 North Korean soldiers in Russia's Kursk region. Their number in the region is increasing, according to Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. He also reminded that it will soon be three months since the start of Ukraine's operation in the Kursk region. Ukrainian defenders keep the sanitary zone near the border under control. The president emphasized that the Kursk operation has significantly contributed to freeing Ukrainian defenders from Russian captivity. In Kursk alone, Russia had suffered 17,800 casualties over the past three months, Ukrainian commander-in-chief Oleksandr Sirsky said on Telegram, including 6,600 killed. North Korea could not make an appreciable difference, said researcher Olena Gusenova in a new study for the Friedrich Norman Foundation last week. The regime, in perspective, could potentially provide Russia with an additional three to four units, comprising 15,000 to 20,000 soldiers of various skills, she concluded. Even in such a case, however, North Korean assistance is unlikely to change the overall course of the war. The reasons, she said, were political and military. The deployment of a large number of soldiers poses challenges in controlling their movements on the ground, heightening the possibility of desertion or defection. Gusenova wrote, requiring security personnel to closely monitor the troops.